Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. On behalf of California's Legislative Black Caucus, I'm honored to rise in support of H.R. 42 in support of Cesar Chavez. I simply want to echo the sentiments of my colleagues on how important the work and legacy of Cesar Chavez has been in the farm worker movement, in the labor movement, in the human rights and civil rights movement. His fingerprint is on all of these efforts that, from which we have all benefited. He has created an indelible imprint on the human rights movement and to lift us all up out of struggle. The incredible work that Cesar Chavez did with incredible leaders like Dolores Huerta and Larry Itliang and so many others who have been mentioned on this very floor. I don't have anyone in my family who I'm aware of has been a farm worker in the way that we've defined farm worker in this particular movement. But as has been mentioned, the issues of farming and struggle are not new to African Americans. First as slaves, struggling for fair treatment, and then later in sharecropping, struggling for fair wages and fair treatment in the market. Uh, this is a struggle from which we can all learn and have all benefited from. I often think about the parallels to the farm worker movement, to the civil rights movement, and the work that Dr. King has done. In the letter that Cesar Chavez wrote to Dr. King saying essentially that the struggle of African American people and the struggle of the people that Cesar Chavez was fighting for is in fact the same struggle. It's an honor that we get to honor Cesar Chavez today, that we honor him with schools that are named after him, including an elementary school in my district in Richmond. It's an honor that we get to do the work and carry out the legacy of Cesar Chavez, that we have in this very house a farm worker housing bill, and I'm honored to be one of the many joint authors too, that we can continue the conversation that he led. And it is an honor that on the day when we honor Cesar Chavez, we can do something to fight for wages of the hardest working people in California. So let us continue to honor that legacy. Let us take up the mantle of discussion from the Black Caucus, from Cesar Chavez, from the Latino Caucus, from others, who says we must always fight for economic opportunity for all people. And there are many who have still been left behind. Let us, in honoring the legacy of Cesar Chavez, take up that fight for those who have been left behind. And I urge your support of this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Mr. Levine, you are recognized from your desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. On behalf of the Jewish Caucus, I proudly rise in support of H.R. 42, and I thank the author for bringing forward this important resolution. It is ironic today, as we celebrate the life of Cesar Chavez, an iconic warrior for worker rights, that we also pass legislation to provide an honest day's pay for an honest day's work for 2.2 million Californians who earn a minimum wage. As we celebrate the life of Cesar Chavez, I believe he would celebrate our actions today. When we talk about Cesar Chavez, we talk about the plight of workers and the need to provide strong worker protections in the law. In the fight for workers, there is a profound connection between Cesar Chavez and the Jewish community. Consider 17-year-old Nan Freeman. She was from Wakefield, Massachusetts and was a student at New College in Sarasota, Florida. She joined UFW efforts during a strike at Talisman Sugar Company near Bell Glade, Florida. She was killed on January 25, 1972, when a double trailer semi truck loaded with 70,000 pounds of sugar cane hit and knocked Ms. Freeman into a guardrail while she was walking a picket line. Cesar Chavez wrote in a statement after learning of Nan's death To us, she is a sister who picketed with farm workers in the middle of the night because of her love for justice. She is a young woman who fulfilled the commandments by loving her neighbors, even to the point of sacrificing her own life. To us, Nan Freeman is Kadosha in the Hebrew tradition, a holy person to be honored and remembered for as long as farm workers struggle for justice. Today, there is a tree planted in Nan's memory at a park on 40 acres near Delano. I'm very proud of the rich history of Jewish Americans joining Cesar Chavez arm in arm in his fight for worker rights. Ultimately, Cesar Chavez's fight for workers will never be forgotten, as this is a fight for all of us, and this is a fight that continues today. I ask for your I vote on this resolution. 
Thank you, Mr. Levine. Ms. Campos, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I often have spoken about having marched as a young child with my parents alongside Cesar Chavez. And I've spoken often about how this experience has been an inspiration throughout my life, especially as a public servant. By Cesar Chavez's vision for equality and social change. His passion and leadership came at a time when workers needed hope and a unifying force to help them fight for basic rights. Through his dedication and leadership, they obtained these basic rights. As a society, we have progressed. We've seen CESAD's vision for enhancing the rights of workers continue. We've also done amazing things on this floor, such as improving safety standards and giving workers paid sick leave. However, our work is still not done. When we still see there are farm workers not getting paid overtime after spending an entire day in the fields, our work isn't done. And when we see that women of color are still paid disproportionately to their male counterparts, our work isn't done. With Latina women making 44 cents to every dollar a white male makes, and African American women making 53 cents to the dollar, our work is not done. We have so many opportunities to continue Cesar Chavez's legacy. Members, today is a day that we honor him, but most importantly, we honor his legacy to continue to make sure that whether you work in the fields or you work in a fast food restaurant or you work in retail or you are taking care of our children, that you should be making a decent wage, a living wage, to be able to live in the state of California with respect and dignity. I ask that we support this H.R. 42. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campos. Mr. Williams, you are recognized. Members, I rise in support of H.R. 42 uh, in recognition of Cesar Chavez as chair of the API caucus. I want to recognize Cesar Chavez and the whole farm worker movement and their teaching about alliances and partnerships that unite all people. I think one of the reasons why our, the ethnic caucuses in this house work so closely together is the shared heritage and background of the farm worker and civil rights movements. These brave men, women, and children of the farm worker movement understood that true democracy fulfills its purpose when the most vulnerable have the opportunity to be active participants in it. And the farm worker movement has developed and inspired future generations of leaders. Si se puede. Dr. Eggman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as the chair of the LGBT caucus to honor this great California icon that we all stand up for today. Uh, Cesar Chavez was one of the first people who stood with the LGBT movement because he understood that we can't leave anybody behind. And I think that's one of the things, members, that we have to take from this great man today, that he was a coalition builder, that he was a consensus maker, that he didn't just act by himself out in front. He didn't have to be the one out in front having all the fanfare. No, he stood with people because he knew that was the best way in order to get things done. When he reached out to Harvey Milk about the, the great boycott, because they had already worked together, we were able to be stronger together. When the Teamsters needed our help, we with the, uh, the Coors strike, we were there together because we were stronger together. That's one of the great lessons that I think that we can take from him on this great day, that when we leave people out, we don't get ahead. The best way to achieve social justice for all of us is when we work together, we build consensus, we build coalitions, and we work for the good of the whole. I ask for your I vote for H.R. 42. Thank you, Dr. Eggman. Mr. Bonta, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of this measure. Uh, many of you have heard from me as I've, I've spoken on this floor in the past about my own family's personal experience with the United Farm Workers of America and uh, with Cesar Chavez. My parents were farm worker organizers with the United Farm Workers of America, and as a young boy, I grew up in La Paz, the headquarters for the UFW movement. And there, 
My family and I lived in a trailer that was a stone's throw away from the home of Cesar Chavez. Uh, the great Philip Veracruz would come over from time to time for breakfast, and Dolores Huerta was there as well. And that shaped uh, my values, uh, my commitment to public service. And I want to thank the members today for appreciating and recognizing the contributions of uh, other great leaders that were part of that beautiful collaboration, Larry Itliong, Philip Veracruz, for acknowledging the Delano Grape Strike of 1965, and the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee. That uh, partnership became one of the greatest social justice movements and fights for justice in the history of this state, and was because of that, of that beautiful collaboration. So I, I'm honored to be on this floor, in large part due to the values instilled in me by the legacy of the great Cesar Chavez, an honor that we can all celebrate together the life and legacy of Cesar Chavez. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. All discussion having ceased on the resolution, Mr. Hernandez, you may close. Thank you, colleagues, for your thoughtful comments. I respectfully ask for an I vote, and I'd like to request that the first roll be open to co-authors. The authors asking the first roll be open for co-authors. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who wish to vote. This is for co-authors, members, co-authors on the resolution. Co-authors on H.R. 42, the clerk will close the roll. There are 68 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. We have some guests in the chamber today related to this resolution. Mr. Alejo, you are recognized for your guest introduction. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker and members. It has been the tradition during this commemoration of Cesar Chavez Day to recognize some heroes that continue the work and legacy of Cesar Chavez and the farm worker rights movement. Uh, today, I rise to recognize at the rear of the chambers, Amagda Perez, who is the executive director of the California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation and a supervising attorney of the UC Davis Immigration Law Clinic. In both capacities, she provides legal representation to indigent immigrants. And as chair of the Latino Caucus, I want to personally pay tribute to attorney Amagda Perez and the important role she has played in delivering justice to our state's indigent rural communities. After law school, she worked for California Rural Legal Assistance Incorporated, representing farm workers and immigrant families in labor, education, and legalization cases. But in 1997, she became executive director of CRLA Foundation, a nonprofit organization based right here in Sacramento, providing advocacy, technical, and legal assistance on behalf of California's rural poor. Since 1996, she has directed citizenship campaigns and has assisted thousands of rural immigrants to apply and obtain U.S. citizenship. But not only has she offered services through her leadership as the director and as an attorney, in 1994 she also joined the UC Davis School of Law faculty. She has taught a wide array of seminars on immigration related topics and is an expert on naturalization and family based immigration. As a supervising attorney at the clinic, her mentorship and training has developed law students into practice ready attorneys and many of them pursue public interest careers upon graduation, I personally being one of those students. Uh, she is here with another good mentor of mine and a longtime farm worker champion, Juanita Ontiveros, who has dedicated her life advocating for farm workers. I want to thank both uh, Attorney Perez and uh, Juanita Ontiveros for their dedication, service, and leadership, and making a profound impact on the lives of so many farm workers and rural poor throughout California. If we could give her a big assembly welcome and recognition, everybody.
Mr. Hernandez, you are recognized for your guest introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I rise to recognize at the rear of the chamber representatives from the Immigrant Law Clinic at UC Davis School of Law. They're led here today by Dean Kevin Johnson. The clinic was one of the first of its kind in the United States. It provides legal services without charge to indigent, indigent persons, particularly client groups that have traditionally lacked significant legal representation. The clinic helps to develop law students into first-rate lawyers who will serve the profession for decades to come. Given its proximity to the Central Valley, the clinic is in a unique position to serve the state's large community of immigrants. The clinic was established in 1981, and over the years, it has represented immigrants from all over the world. It is, only, it is the only clinic in the nation devoted to representing detained immigrants before the immigration courts. The clinic stands alone in its statewide role providing critical advice to public defenders about the potential immigration consequences facing immigrant defendants. The Immigrant, immigrant immigration, immigration and Citizenship Project provides education outreach and legal service to immigrants seeking to integrate and to participate in civic and political society. The Childhood Arrivals Project provides legal support and representation to unaccompanied immigrant minors seeking forms of relief such as deferred action for childhood arrivals. Through these efforts, thousands of DACA-eligible immigrants have received critical information about DACA, the DACA program, and many have received direct assistance in preparing the DACA applications. Let us recognize UC Davis Immigration Law Clinic for its public service. Thank you. Members, this concludes our ceremony. Mr. Medina, you have some guests with us in the gallery today. Mr. Speaker and members, on this Cesar Chavez Day, it is my pleasure to welcome students from the Law Academy of North High School in my district. If they'd please rise. The Law Academy offers students the ability to explore careers in law and protective services while maintaining a rigorous academic curriculum. It encourages students to get involved in their community and requires them to complete 35 hours of community service per year. It involves students in events partnered with the Riverside Police Department, the Fire Department, and other public agencies. It also offers hands-on learning in fire science, law tech training, and law enforcement. Members, if you would please give them another warm round of applause. Mr. Mays, for what purpose do you rise? M Mr. Speaker, request a Republican caucus in the Rules Committee room. Republican Caucus in the Rules Committee room members, Republican Caucus in the Rules Committee room.